everybody, Jamie Trell here, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach. And I'm releasing this video today on Giving Tuesday. So regardless whether you're watching it when it first came out or later in time, all of this is still gonna apply. But the reason that I wanted to release this video today is because today is a day that you might be further incentivized to make a charitable contribution to a cause that you really care about. And I'm making this video specifically as it relates to those who own a business and who maybe have questions about how this is gonna work from a tax perspective and what's the best way to make charitable contributions in general, whether on Giving Tuesday or any other day of the year, to make that work best from a tax perspective. So we're gonna jump on into some of the do's and don'ts and just some things to watch out for. But first I wanna say, I'm glad that you're here because I believe very strongly in the ability of people and businesses being able to make a huge shift in the world around us and in our communities by giving of the money that we make in our business and putting that money back to work in our communities. So I'm glad that you're thinking about it and I really, really hope that I can give you some valuable information today. So before I get started, I have to give the obligatory disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I am a CPA, but I'm not your CPA. So this is not financial advice specifically for you. Make sure to sense check things with your CPA about your specific situation. Now that that's over with, let's jump into figuring out how charitable contributions impact you. And the first question I have for you, as I often have, is what type of entity are you? Because that is going to dictate how charitable contributions and deductions will work for your business. So on one side of the coin, you might be a sole proprietor, LLC, or S Corp. Those are all pass through entities. Okay, that's going to become important later or you might be a C corporation. C corporations tend to be on the bigger side most of the time. So first of all, I will say, if you're a C corporation, you can take this deduction. When you make a cash contribution to a charity, you can take that deduction from your business. That is actually a business deduction that is tax deductible when you're coming up with the amount that you are gonna be taxed as profit in your business. Now, if you aren't a C Corp, which most of you watching this probably are not, things work a little bit differently. So stick with me here. So if you are that sole proprietor, LLC or S Corp, if you're not sure what entity type you are, you're probably one of those, that's considered a pass-through entity, which means you don't actually pay taxes at the business level. Those taxes that you pay are passed down and paid individually by you. And the way that that, that works is if you make a contribution, even if you make it out of your business, if it is a cash contribution, in general, that's not going to be deductible directly to your business. That's not gonna be something that actually will reduce the taxes you need to pay as a business. So that's really important to understand because what that means is the only way you're gonna get a deduction for that is if you can take it as an itemized deduction on your schedule A. Okay, essentially those charitable contributions pass on to the owners. If there are multiple owners, you're gonna take your share of those contributions and then you are going to see if you can deduct them on your Schedule A. What the heck does that mean and how do you determine whether you can deduct them on your Schedule A? Well, that's gonna depend on whether you itemize your deductions. Now, back in the day before the 2018 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, a lot more people itemized their deductions. Why? Well, because when you're figuring out whether to itemize, you're going to compare that to the benefit you get by taking the standard deduction. So this is true for all taxpayers, whether a business owner or not. You're always going to want to compare what you would get as a deduction using the standard deduction versus the itemized deduction. Back in 2018, the standardized deduction was increased significantly and made it less likely for people to actually itemize their deductions. So let's go over that just a little bit. Now, just for reference, the standard deduction for 2021 is $12,550 if you are single or $25,100 if you are married filing jointly. So ultimately what that means is that amount of income, that first, let's say 25,100 if you're married filing jointly, is exempt from income taxes you will not have to pay anything if you are making under that. Now, there are exceptions to that around payroll taxes and things like that, but in general, that's what the standard deduction really means. When we compare to itemizing our deductions, you're only ever going to itemize your deductions and pick that 
if it's more than what you would get as your standard deduction. So either $12,550 if you're single or $25,100 if you're married filing jointly. So what things count as itemized deductions to begin with? Well, the biggest things that are gonna count as itemized deductions are gonna be things like real estate taxes or mortgage interest, charitable contributions, or potentially if you had some very significant medical bills that were not paid by insurance. You can also take some deductions for state and local taxes paid. So that is going to be what will make up itemized deductions. And when you're walking through doing any kind of tax preparation, either your tax preparer or the software that you're using to prepare the taxes will walk you through essentially doing both calculations so that you can make sure to choose the one that makes the most sense for you. So you can see here where if you have a lot of those things, and especially if you have a lot of charitable contributions potentially, you might be able to get above that threshold where it makes more sense to take an itemized deduction than the standard deduction. So if that's the case for you, you will be able to take all of those charitable contribution deductions on your Schedule A and therefore reduce the amount of income taxes that you have to pay related to those. But if you take the standard deduction and you're itemized isn't that much, then you're really not getting a tax benefit for making those charitable contributions, which is unfortunate, really. However, there are a few exceptions to this and a few things you might be able to do even if you typically take the standard deduction. So let's jump into my three tricks for still being able to get a tax benefit for making charitable contributions, even if you typically take the standard deduction. My very first thing that I want you to think about, and this specifically relates to my business owners, can you, instead of making a cash contribution to a charity, maybe there are situations where you could make that as a sponsorship. Can you sponsor perhaps a booth at a festival for a not-for-profit that you really want to support? If there's some type of marketing and advertising benefit, perhaps being able to display your logo, things like that, then that is actually considered a marketing and advertising expense, which means your business can deduct that. And there is no threshold for your business deducting it like there is when you're deciding between itemized deduction and the standard deduction. You get the benefit from dollar one. So that's the great thing about if you're able to deduct it in your business, that is going to get a better tax benefit for you than potentially putting it on your Schedule A, especially if you don't usually itemize. Also potentially for my business owners, maybe it's gifting inventory. So you can't necessarily gift inventory and get a huge deduction for necessarily what you would have sold that inventory for. But in most cases, you are going to be able to deduct at least the cost of that inventory. So if you have some things sitting around that you're not sure you're going to use, perhaps that might be something that is a good thing to be able to give to charity. Then you get to write off that inventory and do something that is good for the world as well. So those are two strategies for my business owners to employ when they're looking at how and when they they give their charitable contributions. Now, the second way that you can potentially get a bigger benefit out of your charitable contributions from a tax perspective is something that applies not just to my business owners. This can be employed by anyone. What I'm gonna talk about is called bunching. So it's, it's bunching your charitable contributions. What the heck does that mean? Now, this is something a lot of people actually employ. A lot of financial advisors will talk about. And what that means is really loading all of your contributions, maybe for two separate years into only one year. So perhaps you make all the charitable contributions for 2021 and 2022 within 2021 or within 2022. How can you do that exactly? Well, think about it this way. Let's say that you decide to give all of your charitable contributions on one day. We don't always do that, but sometimes we do. So a lot of times I will make charitable contributions on December 31st, let's say, right? If I waited and instead made those charitable contributions on January 1st, then they would be deductible next year because charitable contributions are deductible in the year that you make them, almost across the board. There are some exceptions, but typically that's how it will work. So if I make those on January 1st of 2022, and then I make my donations for 2022 on December 31st, 2022, both of those will hit in the same year. I'm only changing by one day when I actually make those contributions, but they will both hit within the same year. What does that mean? That means you've bunched those together. So now you are more likely to go above that itemized deduction threshold. 
and be able to take more of a benefit for those contributions made. That's going to be especially important for maybe those of you who are right below the threshold. Your standard deduction is pretty close to your itemized or not too far below it. If you put more of those deductions in one year, then one year you're going to be way over the threshold, which means you're going to get a benefit for every dollar above that standard deduction threshold that you itemize. So if the itemized is roughly 25,000, but maybe you have 40,000 between your mortgage interest and your real estate and your charitable deductions for two years, you can put that all into one year and potentially itemize that one year. And then the next year you take the standard deduction. So typically that's going to be how it runs when you're bunching is you are going to take the standard deduction, then you're going to itemize, then the standard deduction, then you're going to itemize. It is one of those kind of fancy things that financial advisors will bring up to you that a lot of the general public isn't utilizing, but it can be really useful for the general public as well. So think about that. Is it possible for you to maybe uh, make those contributions early or perhaps delay them a little bit so that you can put more into one year and then be able to get the benefit of taking those as itemized deductions, okay? So something to think about, that's strategy number two. Now we're gonna get even more, <laughs> even more into the weeds here. So if I lost you at number two, number three might lose you even more, but I want to at least mention this because I think it is an amazing vehicle. Again, not a financial advisor. Talk to your financial advisor about whether this would be a good move for you. But I want to make sure people know about something called a donor advised fund. I'm in the financial world and this is something that I just relatively recently realized was a thing and that it has been a game changer for me. And this is especially true for those of you who also have investments outside of things like a 401k. If you have regular investment account where you're getting stocks that are appreciating, this could be a great, great option for you. What the heck is a donor advised fund? Stick with me here. A donor advised fund is something where you can actually donate appreciated stock. You probably don't want to donate regular stock and you definitely don't want to donate stock that you have gotten a loss in. But if your stock since you bought it and now has increased significantly, especially if that's happened within the last 12 months, i.e. a short term gain, and it's something that you want to sell, right? Something you don't want to keep anymore. You can donate that stock to a donor advised fund. Why is that something that you would want to do though? Well, here is why. When you donate that to a donor advised fund, you get a charitable deduction for the full fair market value. So what you paid plus the amount that it has appreciated. You get to deduct that on your taxes. Again, subject to the itemized versus standard deduction calculation. But ultimately, if you're itemizing, you will get to deduct the full fair market value of that contribution. Now, why is that better than the alternative? Well, the alternative would be, okay, I'm gonna sell this stock. I'm gonna recognize the gain on it. So let's say you bought the stock for $10,000. You're selling it for $20,000. Now you're gonna have to pay capital gains taxes on that $10,000. Okay, the extra $10,000 that you made. When you sell it, you gotta pay capital gains taxes on it. So if I lost you on that last one, don't worry about that one. <laughs> but if you are a business that gives substantially, if you're giving substantially, if that's part of your business model, um, that is part of our business model with what I do, we give 10% of our profits to charitable organizations that align with our mission. So typically that's around women and children. Because we do that, we wanna make sure that we're getting the best tax advantage. And not necessarily just for us, by getting a better tax advantage, that makes it easier to be able to give even more. So know that being able to be savvy about taxes, I would rather my money go more to the organizations that they are helping versus to Uncle Sam. As much as I love you, Uncle Sam, <laughs> I think that the more we can give to these charitable causes, the better. And being able to get tax deductions for these types of things can help you make a bigger impact. Now, if you're looking for a donor advised fund, go on to Google, you can find it. I would start by asking your specific financial advisor or the investment firm you're already using, whether they offer this. I use Schwab and so I have a Schwab charitable account. The great thing about that is you can couple using a donor advised fund with doing the bunching like we talked about with your charitable contributions. It makes it a lot easier because of the fact that I can make all those donations in one year into the fund but then I can make the grants to the charities out of the fund into future years. So what I'm doing, because I'm bunching, I'm putting more charitable contributions into 2021. However, I will be actually making those contributions out of the fund in 2022. 
too, right? So you have some control over the timing and when you actually gift those things to the charities. But when you put the money in the fund, that's when you get the deduction. Now, one thing I wanna interject here to say is when we're talking about the standard deduction versus the itemized deduction calculation, right? In the year 2021, um, if you're watching this in 2021, there is a special rule that was related to the CARES Act with COVID-19, where actually, even if you take the standard deduction, you can still get a benefit for the first 300 if you're single or $600 if you are married filing jointly of charitable contributions that you make. So definitely make sure to take advantage of that even with the standard deduction. Again, if you donate $300, you can take that as a tax write-off if you're single or 600 for married filing jointly even if you take the standard deduction. That is a specific COVID rule. I would love if they continue something like that because the more ways that we can encourage people to give to charities and give them uh, more benefit for doing so through their taxes, I think is a good thing, but I'll have to take that up with Congress. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful for you. Let me know down in the comments what more you would like to hear about. Also make sure to sign up for the waitlist for my program if you're a business owner and you wanna learn how to manage your cash better so that you can give even more. That's part of my program, part of one of the things that I teach, one of the tenants that we have is about giving to charities and to make an impact on the communities around us. Make sure to go to jamietroll.com forward slash FFF and learn more about my program. It only opens one to two times a year. So you wanna make sure you're on the wait list so you don't miss it. Talk to you soon.